Hunter, Logan Anderson, Kirkley Badger Grove. Well, thanks very much, Nigel, and uh, can I add my welcome to Leeds, which is my home city, so welcome everybody for the second time. Can I also say it's really pleasing to hear somebody from the Badger Trust praising all of the efforts of the Hunt Saboteurs, who are the guys who, without their work on the ground, this work against the car would have failed a long time ago. And uh, I personally will be looking forward to joining my, my friends from South Wales as we go and uh, do our work again in, in Dorset this year. Now, for myself, when, when my wife came back one day from, uh, from some show where she'd met this little old lady called Hazel Park, who was the, the person behind the Kirkley's Badger Group, when Rachel said to me, how do you fancy joining Kirkley's Badger Protection Group, I never thought for one moment I'd be stood here talking to you people. I also never thought for one moment I'd be wandering the fields of Dorset and Somerset in the middle of autumn evenings. I also thought I wouldn't be wandering around pheasant shoots in Gloucestershire, wondering where all the cows were and why they've all been replaced by all of these cages. But here we are. You get to a point when you're doing your little local things with your badger groups and things, where you suddenly think something's got to change here and unless we go and do something about it, nothing is going to change. And at Kirk Lees, We've been running for about 40 years and uh, quite a few of our people have been in the group for that long. And we're not going to get too many of them out in the, fi out in the fields down where, where things are happening. The group was set up 40 years ago because back in the 70s, badgers didn't have anything like the level of protection they purport to have now. They were absolutely fair game. Uh, they were pests, pest, people killed them, people ate them. With the act that came in 1992, Badgers were afforded some level of protection and we think that where we are in a TB free zone our badgers have been quite okay for the last few years but there is something Nuala made mention to it and Dominic's made mention to it as well today we are seeing this creeping growth in the persecution of our badgers and we think that people are hiding behind the fact that there's a cull going on elsewhere in the country to do that in the last couple of years we've seen sets dug We've seen sets filled in, we've seen diesel poured down them. We had one farmer who's had badges on his land for about 30 years, plough it over, claiming that he didn't know they were there. And in the most recent case, beyond all of this badges being a pest, we are starting to see more people participating in what they sickeningly refer to as sport in torturing and killing our badgers. The most recent one last autumn, happened in the, the beautiful home valley where I live. And we've got a lot of badgers there. And one autumn evening on a school night, 11 o'clock, there was a member of the public walking down a quiet country lane and noticed a Land Rover, a silver Land Rover pull up, some very bright torches shining on a field, and then two dogs racing down the field. Now the two people that were stood watching these dogs, quite possibly filming these dogs, didn't realize until this passerby was very close up. Suddenly the lights went off, and there was this awful uncomfortable moment when the sound of snarling dogs was joined by the visceral screaming of a dying animal. Now, registration was taken. About two weeks later, the police and RSPCA raided a, a very well-known and successful farm shop in the Bolster Moor area of Huddersfield. And uh, samples from the dogs, well, the dogs were confiscated initially. DNA from those dogs matched DNA that was found of the dead badger which the police found 15 minutes after they were called. The dead, warm, adolescent badger. You always get one. Thanks, Neil. Today, here we are, we're nearly nine months later, and there has still not been a successful prosecution in this case. It is an absolute disgrace, and it is symptomatic of what is happening in this country. Our police are, are, are having their resources stretched. There is no focus on wildlife crime, and these people are getting away with it. Now, it's very easy for our members of our group to really feel quite disheartened by that, and for everybody to feel disheartened by it. But you know what? In me personally, it summons up two key emotions. One is anger, and anger can be quite useful, because anger, anger engenders a kind of determination and we are going to go after these people for the crime that they committed. 
I mean, these guys commit crimes regularly because they're members of Cold Valley Beagles, who a number of you guys will know about. So, you know, we've got some, we've got some work to do. We've got some uh, work to do with the 5,000 followers that they've got on Facebook. But we will do that work. Believe me, we will do that. I think I, I, I wanted to share that with you a little bit. We have got a growing number of incidents taking place. We, we've seen developers push badges out of the way and certainly try the best they can. I guess I've got three messages though for the people here. First of all, to the local groups, to the local badger groups. I noticed somebody come all the way up from uh, Hearts and Middlesex. Good on you. To all the people in the local groups. Yes, fantastic. That is really good. To all the people, make sure you map your sets, first of all. To the Badger Trust, help them do that. We, we need a standard system of making sure everybody knows where their sets are. Secondly, very importantly, when you have a crime committed in your area, go through every channel you can to make sure it gets followed up. The first thing you want to ask the police when you talk to them is, what's the name of your boss? What is your reporting line? Get in touch with your local councillors and you have to follow it through. We're about to go through a, a, an appeal with the Crown Prosecution Service. We're going to try and go through the victim's, victim's basis because unfortunately the victim in this case was 18 inches long and is now dead. So we're going to try and do something on its, on its behalf and on behalf of all of the other badgers in our area. Because one of the things that if you're found guilty under the Hunting Act that will happen to you is that your dogs get confiscated. Now these two dogs will continue to kill these badgers. We've got 40 people in our group. We've got several thousand badgers and we've got hundreds of thousands of miles of empty country lanes. And this is going to go on and these people are going to go on doing this until and unless we are able to stop them. So guys from the local groups, do something about that. Guys from the Hunt Sab groups, fantastic job that you're doing down there. I, I take my hat off to you. When you go down there, I, you know, I've bumped into people around campfires in Somerset wandering the streets and the lanes of, uh, of Dorset and Gloucestershire at two in the morning and I just don't know how you do it. I've been down there about seven or eight times, probably for about three weeks in total. I know I've got a nice warm bed at the end of it when I come back home and some, some good food, but I tell you what, there's nothing so nice as a vegan cupcake at two o'clock in the morning, so good on you, all of those who, all of those who made that. Finally, for anybody who hasn't been down to the cold zone this year, you know, I hope you can summon, or sorry, who hasn't been down and who's thinking about it. You can either go down and join these peace-loving vegans, you can join the Wounded Badger Patrols. There is always something to do and you will be absolutely welcome. You will be thanked by the people that you go along and help, if only if it's to relieve them for a couple of minutes. But the one thing, if you haven't done it yet, summon up some anger, summon up some passion, and get yourself down to the cull zones. And if you do, I might be masked up, but I'll see you there. Thank you very much.